there is definitely not much debating around the fact that the world has gotten pretty complex. We have wars with no end in sight, complex and convoluted political systems, a puzzling global economic machine, and our environment is either perfectly fine or on the brink of disaster, depending on who you listen to. So really, what on earth are we supposed to do with all of this? Do you know? Fortunately, I do, and you do too. We have an answer built into our DNA as human beings. Each and every one of you has an inner spark of creative intelligence that when enabled, will completely highlight solutions to the world around you. Pretty cool, right? This inner spark of creative intelligence, this inherent ability to innovate and create, has been in there all along. Can you see the difference between these two images? That is a Neanderthal, and that is a Homo sapien. Neanderthals were found buried in pits lying on their sides, and 40,000-year-old Homo sapiens were found buried delicately amongst beads and ornaments. When archaeologists uncovered this, it was the earliest evidence we've seen of human creativity and emotion, and even individual identity and symbolic life. Homo sapiens gathered to make things, whether aesthetic or functional, and this helped them develop stronger social ties, which led to stronger social cohesion. But the neurological makeup of Neanderthals didn't really allow for many of these things, and some scientists believe that's why they ultimately didn't survive. They didn't really recognize life's value or have a perspective of time and its consequences. And even though they looked stronger and more robust, they lacked endurance and could actually easily be outrun and or outmaneuvered by Homo sapiens. The Homo sapiens are actually the only species on Earth that's built to self-reflect, um, and this guy definitely can't do that, even though he shares 99% of our DNA. So when you embrace this inner spark of creative intelligence, you ultimately unleash what you're capable of, and we really can't ignore what we're capable of, because we have for far too long. But we know this. According to a study done by Adobe, 75% of us understand the importance of it, but only 25% of us are actually working to build our creative capacity and foster our curiosity. So we seem to understand the importance of it, but how, how do we make it happen? Moving forward, we have to embrace and repeatedly do these three things. Trust, this inner spark of creative intelligence, it's in there, believe me, it's waiting to be seen. Take responsibility for it, and create space for it to flourish. We start each day swiping through emails and going through our task list. We chase this inbox zero and other indicators of productivity as though they were a purpose unto themselves. And this, in pursuit of this task completed, we leave ourselves such little room to think about the whys and the hows, even though they're actually fundamental questions that spur creative discipline. The sheer volume of things we consume is debilitating to our ability to create. There have been so many great minds in history who have come to groundbreaking discoveries as a result of intentionally creating space for it to happen. Einstein's theory of relativity came to him while he was playing the piano, and he deemed this um, a result of a leap in consciousness. Um, he genuinely believed that all fundamental new ideas in science can originate only in intuition, and that it's actually logically impossible to come to the most profound ideas, just through logic. He said, the intellect has little to do on the road to discovery. There comes a leap in consciousness. Call it intuition or what you will. The solution comes to you, and you don't know how or why. But 
we actually do know why now. Um, a somewhat original idea has to go through several brain states before it ultimately surfaces, which is why scholars in the world of creativity have been preaching so heavily exploring and incubating before the sparks fly. In order to cultivate good ideas and move society forward, it's imperative that we look towards artistic and creative endeavors. And that art isn't just frivolous, and its purpose certainly isn't just aesthetic. Art is actually defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. So if it's in our bones, truly in our nature, where is the art in our learning? Where is the art in our everyday life? Alfredo Jarre said, for me, the world of art and the world of culture is the last remaining space of freedom. It's where I can invent models of thinking about the world. I'm free to speculate, I'm free to dream about our world, and I can only do that within the art world. So I have a solution for you all. Let's fill the world with blank canvases. I know it sounds audacious, but we need a revolution in creative opportunity. We have a responsibility to develop this innate creative capacity that we have. We have a responsibility to question, and whether or not we believe we have a responsibility to do, we have the right to move our communities forward. And if we fulfill this inherent and innate ability to embrace our responsibility, we not only enhance our ability to enrich our own lives and those around us, we actually embrace the core of what it means to be human. It's what we're built for. It's what's enabled us to survive. Art and, and images are one avenue, and there's so much we can learn from actively engaging with those things. This guy, who might have done some profound things in his lifetime, knew that thinking began with symbols, with imagination. So I want to leave you with these three things again. Trust your inner spark of creative intelligence. Take responsibility for it. Create space for it to flourish. And join me in painting the world. Thank you. Thank you.